rating. Um, I used to be a director of a global energy exchange, but I'm better now, is what I tell people. I'm going to be talking about open capital, 21st century financing and funding. And if I can make this thing work, that is. Uh, hang on. The right hand button. Which one? Oh, here we go. Okay. That's it. Which one? Yeah. And right. That one. Okay. Right. Twenty first century problems cannot be solved with twentieth century solutions. I'm to put this into context. I'm going to go right back through history. The first generation, I like to distinguish between three paradigms of the economy. Economy 1.0 was around for thousands of years, still is around in many parts of the world. It's decentralized but disconnected, and it requires a physical market presence. Where we are now, Economy 2.0, which I believe died in 2008, and now it's in zombie mode, is centralized but connected. And your presence on the market is no longer physical, it's through an intermediary or middleman. That's where we are now, economy 2.0. The emerging third generation economy is decentralized but connected. And it involves a network presence, not presence through an intermediary, not physical market presence. Now, this is Chris Cook's course, Economy. I don't know much about economics, but I know what I like. I believe that there are three basic sources, if you like, of value. There is location, which is place, land, or space, if you're looking in three dimensions. There's energy, which is material. It's embedded in place, so it's buildings as an example. Or it's immaterial, and it's passing through space, so solar energy or wind energy. And the third, intellect. When I talk about subjective intellect, I'm talking about what's between your ears, what you have that mobilizes your energy, your calories. But more to the point, objective. This is, the, this is what's growing rapidly. Data patterns, knowledge, the subject of intellectual property. Both location and energy can be contested. People can keep you out of that. But if I give you an idea, I cannot take it back. That's why I'm so optimistic about the future, because intellectual value is growing exponentially. Now, I'm going to be talking about, when I define open capital, it, I talk about a credit instrument, an instrument You've got existing ones like debt, derivatives, and equity. All a credit instrument is, is a promise. It's made by an issuer to an acceptor. It's issued in exchange for value received. So I give you something, and I give you my IOU. That's a promise. So it's returnable in payment for value provided by the issuer. That's what it is. What it isn't is debt. Whoever has this promise cannot demand payment in money. He cannot demand delivery, so it's not a derivative. And he has no right of ownership, so it's not equity. So the credit instrument is none of those things. You'll see that it requires trust. It's prepayment or pay it forward. The acceptor can use this credit instrument to pay instead of dollars or euros. And the acceptor trusts that the issuer will be good for supply. Now, in the first generation of markets, the first paradigm, we put trust in a physical currency. That's, we, we trusted other people, but if we didn't trust other people, we demanded a physical object that we did trust. The current generation of markets, we put trust in middlemen called governments or banks. They are trust intermediaries, middlemen. In the future, I believe, we're going to put trust in mutual social contracts or agreements. 
Right, prepay. Well, it's always been around. Now, on the right there, you've got talk prepay, phone card. On the bottom, you've got drink prepay. That's pub tokens for you who've been to the UK. You can spend those in pubs in the UK. And on the left, the subject of my historical research is the way it always has been, tax prepay. Those things there are called tally sticks. And I've got a pair of tally sticks here. You would take a stick, cut notches in them, you get one and I get the other. Primitive accounting token. And that's the way that records were kept before double entry bookkeeping came along. But what were they records of? They were either records of a proof of a payment or they were records of a promise of a payment. Tax prepay, it was a credit returnable in payment for taxes. This is how governments raise money for 500 years. And the tax return was literally the return of that tally stick to the exchequer, the government, for cancellation. And the phrase tax return has been forgotten, the origins. Who here has heard the expression rate of return? Most people will have. Who here knows what it means, actually, other than people I've told about it? It literally means the rate at which these tokens can be returned to the exchequer. So if you prepay eight pounds for 10 pound tax, you're gonna make a two pound profit, 25% rate of return, and it's not fixed. It depends on the existence and the quantity of flow. There's no compound interest in this model. It's just the amount of time and the profit divided by the amount of time. So protocols, <clears throat> agreements. You've got two types of prepaid credit. You've got asset-based, which I call peer-to-asset prepaid credit. Here you need a capital partnership, the expression I use, which is a production sharing agreement entered into between consenting adults. You've got people-based or peer-to-peer prepay credit, which is a risk-sharing agreement between consenting adults. These agreements are associative, two-way, interactive protocols, social contracts, or the French distinguished contrat de société, if I pronounce that correctly, from contrat de mandat, which are imposed by law or judges. So the capital partnership, how am I doing for time, guys? Okay, I'll carry on. <clears throat> Peer to asset credit. Well, let's look at location, which is credit returnable in payment essentially for rent. Energy, credit returnable in payment for energy use. Intellect, credit returnable in payment for the use of IP, knowledge, software, video. All of these credits are valuable because you can use them. You can actually do what you need to do because you've got them. It's a social contract or trust framework for sharing the fruits of use of a productive asset. A proportion of production is allocated to the developer or the manager. The balance of production is available to be issued to investors in the form of prepay credits. That's what it looks like. I'm afraid two of the boxes have disappeared in the, because they're light blue. You've got the occupiers pay a rental. A proportion of the rental goes to the manager and the balance is left to the investors who invest in prepaid rentals. For the community, you're selling rentals forward at a discount, you get locking in the price, you receive an interest-free land loan until the credits are returned. The occupier, he prepays the rent and he locks in the price of the rent. Investor, well, I won't bore you with that stuff. These are the outcomes. It's not housing as a commodity anymore, which is the four Bs, buy, borrow, build, and bugger off. It's housing as a service. It's relationship-based, not transaction-based model. Costs are transformed to revenue shares. It's neutral, because it transcends ego and politics. Collaborative, stakeholder interests aligned and sustainable. Everybody has an interest in minimizing cost over time. Energy, similarly, but I'll just run through that. Energy as a service, neutrality, collaborative, sustainable. Basically, energy is something which is globally fungible, as is 
the word. What the result is, if you prototype this form of investment, is that currency is an outcome. It's an outcome of investing through a capital partnership. If you invest in this way, you get land-based credit. If you invest in this way, in a wind turbine, you get energy-based credit. And good luck, it's actually a currency. But I don't go around saying so. I say, this is how you fund it. It'll never work. Well, for thousands of years, people gave credit to those they trusted. Others paid in currency. For thousands of years, capital partnerships have existed. Islam calls capital partnership musharaka, which I thought was a curry when I first heard of it. Finally, I've just described production sharing. This is how you actually guarantee people-based peer-to-peer credit. Not peer-to-peer -peer debt. That's something very, very different. That's lending existing money. This is guaranteeing my credit that I will do, I will provide value to you. And how it works is that sellers and buyers pay a guarantee, charge, share the costs of operation, and make good any failure to perform. And you have a manager managing it, and this is how it looks. Seller provides value against an IOU. You've got a pool where the guarantee goes into. A guarantee charge goes into the pool, which is held by a custodian. The buyer then settles the credit in euros or euros worth, e.g. energy-based or land-based currency. And then you've got defaults. I'm running on in time here. But basically what you have here is a mutual guarantee of peer-to-peer -peer direct credit. Completely doable. You can do this tomorrow. All you need is an accounting system and an agreement and the people. I call it a clearing union. The outcome, the community is the currency. It's mutual assurance of direct P2P credit risk. It's banking as a service. We need banking, but we don't need banks. It'll never work, people say. Well, I'm saying it has worked for 140 years. For 140 years, ship owners of mutually insured risks that Lloyds of London will not cover. And they do it through protection and indemnity clubs. And the same firm, Thomas Miller, has actually managed the service, not taken the risk, for 125 years. So, open capital, it's the cooperative advantage. It doesn't give something for nothing, a return to landlords or shareholders. It provides financing and funding which conventional capital can't compete with because middlemen are going to transition to service provision or go out of business. So the optimal, when I, th I believe that ethical may just be optimal. So 21st century problems can't be solved with 20th century solutions. You've got to go back before modern finance to find the solutions. Thank you very much. Thank you.